I recently got beta access to Ghosty, the newest, hottest, sexiest terminal on the open source landscape. And I think it's gonna become my default terminal. Still has some rough edges, but it's really, really good. You've probably seen the videos, I'm kinda late to the game, but I wanted to talk about five reasons that I'm excited about Ghosty, but also two reasons why you would maybe not wanna use Ghosty. So let's dive into it. Number one, I'm really excited about the configuration landscape for Ghosty. It's so simple, it's so nice, it's not mangled up in a bunch of complexity or you don't have to do any menu diving. It's just one single simple configuration file. That configuration file lives under .config in Ghosty and it's just one config file there. If we pop my config open right here with Vim, we can see I just have a font, that's it. That's really all that's in there right now. What they recommend for finding some of these configurations on GitHub is just going into the good old search bar and entering path colon ghosty config, which is the config path for this file. Uh, one of my favorites from uh, Folk here in his dot files, who is an awesome NeoVim plugins maintainer. He has a very, very good configuration file that um, I've played around with and used a little bit and is very, very helpful. There's themes, there's a bunch of different things you can do with the mouse, a bunch of different things you can do to change the feel and the look and how things behave. The configuration file is ever evolving as things do in beta products, but one single flat configuration file is just so nice. The opposite, in my opinion, of that really nice configuration layer that just works and is easy to grok, has some examples, and is really well supported by the upstream maintainers, the opposite of that is Alacrity. Alacrity <laughs> has sort of been notorious for, in the past, making it obnoxiously difficult to uh, maintain your configuration, um, especially as they've moved from things like YAML to TOML in the past in 2013, and then basically refused to give anybody an example TOML file. Um, and if, you know, if you're not in software day to day, if you, you just need to pop open your terminal once in a while, do some configurations and things, um, you know, that could be a huge lift. That could be a huge lift manually migrating your stuff from YAML to TOML. And they basically refused <laughs> to support people uh, with a, an example configuration, which at the time was crazy to me. Uh, this was actually the last straw for me, uh, removing Alacrity from my typical workflows. Um, they had an Alacrity migrate command. Um, you could see all the thumbs down, not interested in adding an example configuration file at this point from one of the members. Um, absolutely wild. So um, kudos to the Ghosty maintainers for making, again, just a simple configuration file that's well supported, easy to grok, has examples, um, plus one, keep it up. The second thing I'll say is that there is a sane CLI interface for Ghosty, which goes along with some of that configuration stuff. So on here, I can do Ghosty plus, and we can do list fonts. And then I get a list of all the fonts that Ghosty knows about. There's my beloved Berkeley Mono Nerd font. We can do something like Ghosty plus version, and then we get the build and the version, the Zig version that this thing was built with. By the way, this uses Zig, which is a very powerful, very fast programming language. Um, it's sort of like a C type programming language. You can think about it almost compared to Rust or something in that ecosystem. Having that same CLI configuration interface on the command line here, Ghosty is really, really nice. Alacrity sort of has something like that, but it can get really messy and hasn't always been my favorite to use in the past. Number three is performance. I'm sort of blown away by how good and how fast this terminal emulator is. And most of the time you're not really going to run into something like that unless you're using very intensive terminal applications with a lot of things causing a screen refresh in the terminal like NeoVim, like a bunch of TUIs, a bunch of those kind of things. So I could pop something open like K9s, which is gonna be doing a lot of refreshing, looking at the Kubernetes cluster, basic terminal user interface. Now, if I bring this over, this is the GPU history for how this MacBook's GPU has been getting used. And for the most part, it's been fine. It's been steady. It's been nothing too crazy. And that is sort of the magic of some of the GPU acceleration that happens on the terminal. Again, it's sort of counterintuitive to think that like, oh, it's just rendering some text, but rendering all this text and having to refresh it constantly on the terminal for these terminal intensive applications like TUIs, like K9s, or let's look at another one. NVIM, we go into here and we have our config. 
this is constantly doing a refresh as I edit and as NeoVim does its refresh loop. Again, it just works. The GPU stays more or less at a steady rate, which is really nice. Number four is the native feel of the application. So here on Mac OS, this thing feels more or less like a native Mac app. Using iTerm or WesTerm or Kitty or Alacrity, none of those have ever really felt to me like truly native experiences that integrated really, really well into my workflows um, on Mac OS. And also trying this on Linux, I was surprised how good it felt integrating uh, almost a native Linux experience on the terminal. This is feedback I've seen other people give and I think it really just speaks to the excellent user experience that the whole package brings. Um, and I'm really excited to see how that evolves past the beta into the general release. Part of that native feel for me with using a terminal, with using a tool that makes it feel really good from that native experience, from that native user experience, is that it's it, that it should be relatively unopinionated. And that's some problems I've run into with Kitty, where you know, Kitty's maintainer basically refuses to support Tmux, or if you run into Tmux problems, um, you're basically just out of luck because, in his opinion, uh, Tmux should just not be a thing. It should basically go away. You know, and we could philosophize all day about the merit of different tools and how they work with other tools that you utilize. You know, with a terminal, I sort of just don't care what anybody's opinion is. I just want it to work with what works for me. Um, and that seems to be Ghosty's approach is a great broad set of features um, that work really well across kind of the standard of what we would expect from a terminal emulator. Um, and then adding additional features that support um, pushing the boundaries of what's possible on the command line with command line applications. And that is just really exciting to me. And number five, I'm very excited about the maintainers of this team, primarily Mitchell Hashimoto, who was the founder and creator of many of the HashiCorp projects, um, was there for a long time, exited, I think, a few years ago, and now has been working on Ghosty and other side projects, which, which I just think is awesome. Um, Mitchell, if you've ever used any of the HashiCorp projects, um, Mitchell just has an excellent understanding of what developers want. Um, I think between... Uh, Vagrant and Terraform and uh, some of their secret store stuff and some of their container orchestration pieces of technology. Very excellent. And I think that that ethos is carrying over into Ghosty. And again, I've been burned in the past by maintainers of other projects. And this is open source. Like people can do what they want to do. You know, Alacrity ultimately is a free and open source piece of software. Those maintainers can do what they want. But I've been burned in the past requesting features that they basically have just said like, no, that's stupid, we're not gonna do. Um, even though there's wild support for these things like tab support in Alacrity. People just wanted that. That seems like a sane, normal feature to want in your terminal, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as mentioned in our read read, there's no desire to support this feature. They just didn't wanna do it. Uh, they didn't see that as part of their vision. And that's totally fine. You know, That's their free and open source piece of software. None of us are paying for it so they can make that decision. But I hope that um, Mitchell and the team continue that ethos um, and are excited about working for and enabling developers into the future. Alrighty, let's get into why you might not wanna use Ghosty. I do think that for the most part, this will become pretty ubiquitous with people using open source terminal emulators, uh, but there's a few reasons that there are still some rough edges that I think are worth calling out. Number one is they do not support Windows terminals, which is including PowerShell, uh, Command, um, Windows subsystem for Linux, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it does build for Windows, and uh, yeah, it is on the roadmap, so eventually this will come down the road, but if you're a huge Windows user um, or you frequently have to go off of Mac OS and you want like one single configuration file you can share across Linux, Mac, and Windows, and et cetera, uh, this is probably not the terminal for you currently, um, especially as it sits in beta, because I'd imagine there are a lot of rough edges with trying to get anything like this to work uh, within the Windows ecosystem. So a bit unfortunate for now, but I'd imagine that'll get much better in the future. And then number two, why you might not want to use it is that it's a beta product. Uh, it's very, very rough right now. 1.0 is coming in December, which is exciting, but there's still a lot of things missing, I would say. Um, and they're they're trying to reach you know this this standards compliance, um, a, a state where the whole thing is sort of um, 
up to par with other terminals in the open source ecosystem. As an example to this, I hit a rough edge very recently and I opened an issue which got turned into this discussion by Mitchell, um, where OpenAI's Mac OS ChatGPT desktop thing just doesn't work with the, well, doesn't do the work with feature, uh, which if you've never seen that before, is basically this way that the application for ChatGPT on your Mac um, can interface and read from iTerm, from VS Code, um, from a bunch of these different applications. Um, you know, the ChatGPT thing, this work with for ChatGPT is still also in beta. So it's like two beta things trying to work together. Um, but I really would have loved to have seen this work out of the box. And it sounds like that this is mostly an accessibility feature um, that Ghosty has not quite yet implemented. So that sounds like that's on the roadmap and being discussed. Uh, but there's just like some rough edges like this that I would have loved to have seen ironed out. So if there's some feature or some deep integration with something that you need that works for iTerm2 already or WesTerm or any of these others, I would be surprised if it also deeply integrated already with Ghosty, um, since it is just trying to reach that, you know, kind of base standard state. So keep that in mind if you do decide to adopt or try this out. Otherwise, this thing is going to be my default terminal. I think it is just so great and it feels so good um, from that developer user experience. So hats off to Mitchell. I think that this thing is awesome. Uh, keep up the great work. Very excited for 1.0 and have a great day, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.